while many think Pep Guardiola is a genius. Others label the Manchester City manager Fraudiola. Those in the first camp point to the three La Liga titles in a row and the two Champions League trophies he won in four years at Barcelona. They can also highlight the three Bundesliga titles he won in his time with Bayern Munich. Then there is of course the tiki-taka football that mesmerized the football world. But those who think the Spanish coach is overrated point to his lack of success in Europe without the superstars he inherited in his first job with Barcelona, namely Lionel Messi. In addition there is his first year at Manchester City, a forgettable campaign in which despite all the optimism his appointment generated, the club finished 15 points behind champions Chelsea. Whichever camp you might sit in, it's tough not to believe there is something in the argument he was fortunate to inherit a once-in-a-lifetime team at the new camp and that he has failed to replicate it since. While Messi was the fulcrum of the team, the 2011 Champions League final side that blew Manchester United away at Wembley also included David Villa, Andres Iniesta, Xavi and Dani Alves playing at the peak of their powers. They do mesmerize you with the way they pass it. I expected us to do better, particularly after half-time, but it wasn't to be. Great teams do go in cycles and they're at the peak of the cycle they're in at the moment. They're the best in Europe, no question about that. In my time as a manager, I would say they're the best team we've faced. Everyone acknowledges that and I accept that. It's not easy when you've been well beaten like that to think another way. No one has given us a hiding like that. It's a great moment for them, they deserve it because they play the right way and enjoy their football. But how long it lasts, whether they can replace the team at some point, they certainly have the right philosophy, but it's always difficult to find players like Xavi, Hernandez, Andres, Iniesta and, Lionel, Messi all the time but they're enjoying the moment that they have just now. We never controlled Lionel Messi, but many people have had to say that over the years. It is perhaps notable that of that starting 11, Guardiola only personally signed four of them, Danny Alves, Gerard Pique, Javier Mascherano and David Villa. Guardiola lasted one more year at Barcelona after that 3-1 win over Manchester United, took a year off and then had three seasons at Bayern Munich before joining Man City last summer. While he won the league title every year at Bayern Munich, that is no great achievement, Jupp Hankis did it before him and Carlo Ancelotti did it after. What is the simplest gauge, and one that transcends his moves from Spain, to Germany? to England is the Champions League. It is the competition regarded as the greatest marker of an elite coach's ability. But in the five campaigns he's waged since 2011 Guardiola has failed to reach a single final. Some would argue that four semi-finals and a round of 16 appearance in five seasons is actually quite impressive. But Guardiola is different. The bar he set himself with his achievements in his first job is higher than any other and those that laud him as a genius surely expect better. But there is another element and that is how much he's spent in the transfer market in pursuit of a third Champions League crown. Today Man City signed Benjamin Mendy for £52 million, making the France international the most expensive defender in history. The deal took Guardiola's summer spending over £200 million. No other manager in the history of the Premier League has spent this much in one window. But it shouldn't come as a surprise. In pursuit of success Guardiola has consistently spent vast amounts of money. In his three years at Bayern Munich he dropped £173.4 million on players and in his first year at the Etihad, he had forked out £181.1 million to sign the likes of John Stones and Leroy Sane. Over six summers since last winning the Champions League Guardiola has spent £609.9 million on players, putting his average summer spend above the £100 million mark. At those levels surely success should be inevitable? And any failure proof that his reputation is a myth? His highest levels of spending have been since he joined Manchester City and it is at the Etihad he now has the opportunity to prove he really is one of the great managers. From a purely footballing perspective, people should root for him to be successful.
anything that comes close to replicating the side he managed at Barcelona would be a joy to behold, but failure would be cataclysmic for Guardiola's reputation. If Manchester City do not reach the levels expected after an outlay of over £200 million, the swing of opinion from genius to fraudiola will only go one way, and it may never come back. More, Danilo hails Pep Guardiola effect as Manchester City confirm fifth summer signing.